stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leaves him raised like Simba or cracked like the Beast Dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home, Disney Finally, spooky season, and I have two great Halloween videos lined up for the next two weeks. So I was hoping for a third to get into it early. So we dug through the bin, and as much as it pains me to pick this, the VHS tape is called The Great Honey Pot Robbery. So, I mean, it might be spooky, it might be tense, it might be scary. What's really scary is knowing we have enough poo tapes to do another February is a poo month in the new year. But alas, let's see if anything scary or tense happens in The Great Honey Pot Robbery. Okay, we start. Pooh is snoring and there's something under his bed. He's muttering about honey and when he wakes up, all his honey pots are askew or they're empty. Pooh has been robbed. Over at Rue's house, he hears people under his bed. He yells for his mom and swears he wasn't, quote, nightmaring. My daughter says we've already seen this one and I honestly can't remember. This is the danger of watching so many Winnie the Pooh tapes. Nothing sticks. These are so thrown together with like recycled footage and the plots are all the same. Like I was at a thrift store last week and they had a giant display of Halloween stuff in one corner was old VHS tapes and there were three different VHS cases for spookable poo. They all feel the same. I have no idea if we're doing this one over. My daughter swears we are, but I don't know. It didn't stick, so we're gonna do it again if we did. Piglet had his honey stolen, so off to Rabbit's house. Rabbit storms out of his house because his honey is missing as well. Everyone's honey is gone, and everyone blames Pooh. Pooh stealing honeys. Uh, they figure it's someone else stealing the honey finally, so they put out this pot of honey like a trap with mouse traps around it, and then they march in circles around the mouse traps around the pot of honey. Who has a cuckoo clock of himself? My daughter says we should have a cuckoo clock of herself. I was like, we should have a cuckoo clock of myself. In other news, I love the movie Cuckoo. Okay, they get tired of marching and they all fall asleep. And then the badger and the elephant thing sneak out from under the bed to grab the honey. These guys last seen kidnapping Pooh and his friends, then letting them go because they were so obnoxious and no one would pay ransom for them. What a great plot line. Uh, the characters wake up, they failed, the honey's gone, so they make a Scooby-Doo trap and Tigger messes it up and the Heffalomp and Woozle run out and steal the honey after all. Is that what these two, I can't tell if that was sarcasm or these really are the Heffalump and Woozle. I don't know. I don't really care either. The bad guys literally pick Pooh up and fire him like a dart into the side of the tree. This is the best Pooh cartoon I've ever seen after that moment. Roo shows up and the bad guys think he's a giant mouse, they run away. Tigger calls Roo a little nipper. A what? The bad guys go to the cave and summon some unseen giant monster that also loves honey, because of course it does. There's some giant monster that comes out and wants the honey. This Frankenstein monster named Wooster wants to steal Pooh's honey, and Pooh gives Frankenstein a sermon about being a friend and sharing, and now this freak is their friend. Great. Stripes is up next. Uh, Rabbit wants to give Tigger a bath. It's f***ing weird. So he scrubs and scrubs and scrubs Tigger above and below the waterline and his stripes come off. That's not an euphemism. They don't think he's a Tigger anymore because he doesn't have stripes. Classic poo. He doesn't have his stripes anymore and he's insecure about it so blood in the water, right? They f*** with him. Let's f***ing go. They immediately are like, well, you're not a Tigger after all. No stripes. Maybe you're a rabbit. Maybe you're a bear. Maybe you're a f***ing Christmas tree and they make him stand in the corner and put lights on him and a a star on his head. I'm serious. Just humiliate this guy, right? Finally, they paint stripes on him and they push him outside in the rain and the stripes wash off. No, nope, still not a Tigger. He wanders the forest. He asks, what are you when you're a nothing? I don't know, bro. What the f are you asking me? I'm, I'm everything. I'm awesome. I, I will say he looks ridiculous without his stripes. Eeyore sees that Tigger is more depressed than he is, and he's like, ah, oh, no, that's my thing. That's my thing. He's like, you're still a Tigger on the inside, and that's the pep talk he needs, and he bounces away and gets his stripes back, and everything is back to normal. He throws himself in the mud, and that's it for this one. 
Okay, Monkey See Monkey Do Better is the third short. And where do they come up with these titles? It's Christopher Robin's birthday party and they're all hiding on him because Christopher Robin is sad because no one came to his birthday party. They also didn't get him anything, so they put bows on their heads and they say they are the presents. <laughs> but they see someone already got him a gift. They open it and it's some patriotic wind up one man band monkey thing. This is like Toy Story. He's Buzz Lightyear and he laughs at all these sh old toys and loses his mind when he realizes the bear is named Pooh. His name is Bruno and his box says, once you play with Bruno, that's me. You'll throw your all, you'll throw away all your old toys. That's you. I love this monkey. Uh, he can bounce better than Tigger. He can garden better than Rabbit and do nothing better than Piglet. Who does nothing. This is the best poo tape yet. Honestly, this is a Halloween miracle. Bruno gets honey better than poo. They pack up all their things and leave Christopher Robin's house because they know Christopher Robin will love Bruno and never play with him ever again, as he should. But guess what? Christopher Robin says he loves them all for what they are, and Bruno isn't for him. He's a present for his other friend. Now Bruno is rejected and goes and dies in the forest when he takes out his wind, his his wine, his his key thing out of his back but of course the poo folks bring him back to life and pump his tires now that he's not a threat anymore right now they can be friends now that he's not staying they're like you're the best gift ever good luck bro you're the best you're the best as we fade to black and run credits <sighs> that poo tape was actually fun for all the wrong reasons i'm buzzing now that was great best poo tape yet that's what i think about what do you think what we have is a concern about curtis anderson his interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance that he has. Thank you.